In this video, I'll be replacing the Renergy Wanderer PWM solar charger with the Victron MPPT solar charger. And if you recall in a previous video, I installed the Renergy charge controller, so it's just a matter of swapping out one for the other. And we will be installing the Victron Energy Smart Solar MPPT 7515 controller and the Smart Battery Sense Bluetooth dongle so we can monitor temperature and voltage. And if we compare the Renergy Wanderer to the Vicron 7015, the solar panel voltage on the Wanderer is a maximum of 20 volts. Charger output is 10 amps maximum, which gives us about a theoretically 144 watt maximum, 14.4 volts times 10 amps. And for the Victron 7515, it can handle a solar panel voltage of 75 volts. And with a charger output of 15 amps, theoretically it can provide 216 watts, which is 14.4 volts times 15 amps. And again, we use 14.4 volts because that is the voltage in the bulk charging mode of most charge controllers, which is typically the maximum voltage that the battery will see at a high current rate. And I might point out that the 70 volts in the Victron allows me to put the panels in series. And the advantage of that is that we don't have as much of a voltage drop issue because we're carrying half of the current along the wires than we would at a lower voltage. So in theory, I could put two 100 watt panels in series. And we'll cover series versus parallel connection of solar panels in the next video. And since we don't need to use the load control, we're going to remove the shorting bar. The shorting bar allows the charge controller to have several different modes when we deal with one to disconnect the load. By removing it, we don't really disable it, but we allow the smartphone to configure it. We already have the Victron app loaded on our smartphone because we have been using the BMV 700. We have also installed the optional VE Smart Networking, which allows the Victron Bluetooth devices to intercommunicate. In other words, when we install a device on the app, we can communicate with that device with the smartphone. However, the devices cannot communicate one to another unless we install the VE Smart Networking as well. And it's just a matter of a couple clicks and it's pretty straightforward. We've installed the Smart Battery Sense dongle and we have a looking for Bluetooth LED, the flashing blue light. So we need to see if we can find it with our app. And now when we go back to the app, we see the SmartSense Bluetooth dongle show up. Next we click on it and put in the default pin, which is six zeros. And immediately we get asked to update the firmware on the device. It's interesting to note that you cannot use the device until you do update the firmware. So they have kind of a fail safe preventing you from using old firmware. And we're getting some red and blue lights as we are updating the firmware. And after the firmware updates, we can go back into the app and connect to the SmartSense dongle. And it shows that it's reporting 13.19 volts on the battery and 75 degrees Fahrenheit on the temperature of the battery. So it seems to be working. One thing I've noticed is that the blue light stays on whenever I am connected to the smart dongle. And then if I disconnect from the smart dongle, then the blue light starts flashing again. This is going to be on all the time and it's only about a 7 milliamp year load so it's really not a lot so I don't anticipate this being a big deal. If it were I could just disconnect the fuse. So we're going to button the battery back up and then we'll install the charge controller. Installing the new charge controller is really a pretty simple operation. All I had to do since I already had the PWM controller installed simply remove it Screw the new one in its place, wire it up with the same wires going to the battery and to the solar panel connector on the outside of the RV. And again, we open the app, let it find the smart solar charge controller, enter the same pin, and then it will do a firmware update just like the uh, SmartSense dongle did. And you can see with the flashing yellow and green lights, it's an update mode. And when we connect to the smart solar controller, we now see we have 77 watts of solar power, which is actually pretty good. 18.26 volts coming out of the solar panel, 4.2 amps current. The battery is at 14.29 volts with a 5.2 amps of current. So that's interesting. Look at that. It's got a lower voltage but a higher current at the battery. 
Again, remember we said that with the MPPT controller, it can convert voltage to current. So the MPPT controller is converting the excess voltage from the solar panel to just a bit more current at the battery. So we're actually charging with a higher current than we're getting out of the solar panel. And that is why the MPPT controllers have over a 90% efficiency rating. Some other status screens on the app include a histogram, so you can see what's going on over a daily period, and there's a histogram for the last 30 days as well. You can also see voltage and current graphs for the charge state of the battery, and this actually is showing going from bulk to absorption mode after the charge controller was first started. And finally, if we go back and look at the VE Smart Networking page, we can see that the Smart Solar Charger is using the external battery voltage sensing from the BMV700, which is what the serial number is, the HQ1701JVTSZ. It is using the external battery temperature sense from the SmartSense battery dongle, and we're using the external battery current sense from, again, the BMV700. So this shows us that the three devices are intercommunicating. That concludes the upgrade of our charge controller. Next, we will look at options for connecting solar panels to the charge controller, including parallel, serial, and serial parallel type connections.